Hill in Northern Wisconsin. Um, I work with 4K uh, all the way through eighth grade in my school. Um, I work for Camp Manitowish, YMCA is a contract uh, employee, working with anywhere from late middle uh, to corporate groups. Um, and so I just like to play with everybody. Um, and Lucinda and I, uh, this is our second uh, session in this series and we're just having the best time. And so I'm really glad that you're all here. I would second that. I'm so excited that all of you are here. Uh, so my name is Lucinda Martinelli and I am the creator and director of Whole Planet Consulting. I do education consulting. So I help teachers uh, know how to use the skills of facilitation in the classroom. Uh, so I've been a facilitator and an outdoor educator for about 30 years now. Um, I feel a little old when I say that every single time, but I've also worked in classrooms. I've done substitute teaching. I've done, I've taught uh, adventure PE for a few years. Um, and so I take the lessons that I know from outdoor education and facilitation into the classroom for teachers. Teachers are really being asked to facilitate in the classroom and they're not taught how in general. So um, that's what I do. So I think it's looking like we have a pretty steady number of people now. What do you think, Bryn? Should we get started? Oh, you're here muted. I am doing the thing, uh, talking <laughs> with my mute on. Um, I was just saying that I'll I'll catch anybody up who comes in late with uh, with links and and whatever else, but let's, let's go. Let's roll. All right. So this is how it's going to roll today. Um, just let me, I'm going to go back for just a second. If you came in after we talked about it and you do not have your four pieces of paper, um, you'll want to maybe grab those while I'm talking. Um, you'll want four pieces of paper that are about the same size Eight and a half by 11 works well, but they don't have to be that big. They can be smaller, but if they're too small, you won't be able to do the activity very well. So like a post-it note is a little too small. Like this is a little too small. You want something bigger than that. Uh, so the way things this is gonna work is that we are going to play first of all. Um, last session, we talked about why we play first before we do anything else. Um, and if you missed that session, there is a recording we can get to you. Um, so we are going to play first because that's what we do. That's how we roll. Um, and then we're going to reflect on that play because that's how we pull out the learning from it. Uh, we're going to connect that play and that reflection to a model. Today we're going to be talking about Tuckman's. Um, <laughs> I never can get this right if I don't have it front, in front of me. Tuckman stages of group development. That's what it is. Um, we're going to be hitting on one of those stages in particular. And then we're gonna attach that and help you grow your own practice by reflecting on how this is gonna work for you in your context, in your practice. So let's play. So as we play, uh, we have a philosophy of challenge by choice always. And what that means is that we wanna challenge you. We want you to try something that might be new for you or maybe a little challenging for you, um, but you always have some choices within that. Uh, some of the choices will be technical, um, choices about having your camera on or camera off, having your mute on or off, having the chat open, that kind of thing. Um, and some of the choices will be kind of built into the activity. Um, as we do the activities, we'll uh, elaborate what those choices may be at the time. Um, let me also say if uh, Zoom is fairly new to you, there are a couple Zoom tricks. Um, some things that you might want to do, like have water nearby, um, turn off your self view. That's something you can do on your, in your screen. Um, that's helpful for their brain reasons why that happens. We can maybe talk about that a little bit in a different webinar, but um, mm -hmm. so those are some kind of Zoom survival tips. So we are gonna send you into a breakout room for this first thing. And we always like to start with introductions. So we're gonna send you into a breakout room with a partner and you and your partner are gonna have about two or three minutes just to share who you are and uh, something from the Jamboard questions. 
You can pick your favorite question and your favorite answer and talk about why you answered the way that you did. Um, I'm particularly enjoying the superpowers that people have chosen, so, but it's up to you. Challenge by choice, you get to pick which question you get to answer with your partner. All right, are we ready with those breakout rooms, Brim? I am. All right, we're gonna send you out. We'll be, have you back in just about two or three minutes. And there they go. There they go, off into breakout rooms. All right. This is so much nicer with a partner when we send people oh to breakout rooms. Right. By myself, I'm just in this big black box and it's not that fun. I need my paper. Oh yeah. I got so excited. <laughs> did, uh, did Nikki reach out to you? Should, um, you no, not yet. Maybe that's something I can do. I can put a timer on. Yeah, we'll get people uh, back pretty quickly, I think. She wanted to just tell you how much she loved Paper Terra as an activity. Oh, awesome. I love it. I was so excited when I discovered how well it works online. Um, yeah. Because I do it in person fairly frequently. And I love that it just works so well in here. Because it's so simple. It just, like... We usually have paper lying around, especially in the classroom. Like we have scrap paper all the time sure. in the classroom. So we can just grab some scrap paper and uh, there's just so much you can do with it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the conversation we're gonna have today. A little bit different, a little bit different take on it, a little, I think, than sometimes we do. Sometimes it's just a communication thing, but we're gonna, we're mm -hmm. gonna step it up a little. All right, so I think we can bring everybody back. All right, you ready? Yeah. I'm gonna keep. Okay, so they will close in 60 timer. seconds. Perfect. Oh, buddy, you're on mute. I left by mistake. Can you send me back in there? Uh, do you know which room you were in? Yes, I was with Kelly. Uh, and Sandy, I think her name is. I don't think I can send you back. Okay. You got to <laughs> just wait. We had, yeah. a, we had somebody who had just got it in, so we were explaining her about the jam oh, yeah. and this and that, and then I see all of a sudden 58 seconds left. So I wanted to click it to get away, and I clicked and I left. I oh, no. I don't know. Try control Z. Does that do it? Can you undo? Undo, undo. <laughs> Zoom, it doesn't work. Everybody's going to come and come back right quick. Here they go. <laughs> Here they are. One, one mistake there. You didn't tell us how much time we had, or did you? We, we did. You did? You said five minutes? What did you say? We said two to two three. three minutes. Okay, that was too much quick to ask for such a short time. Well, we had the, that situation, but it's okay, all good. All right. Don't worry, you, you, you haven't left those partners forever. So right. you'll worry. get a chance again to talk yeah. to them again. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you got a chance to at least share names or something. I know Sylvia had, Silvio had a, a little bit of an issue, but um, don't worry, you get to see those partners again. Yes. Um, Bryn is going to walk us through what we're going to do next. Um, well, what we're going to do, um, do you want to click through to the next? Yep, there we go. There we Sorry. Go. All right. I'm going to send you back into breakout rooms. And in those breakout rooms, you guys are going to form a band. So the rules... <clears throat> of this challenge are that your band needs a name. Um, everybody needs to participate. So you need to come up with either an instrument or a role for each person. And then you have to decide what sort of genre you are or the name of your top hit. All right, so 
Um, I'm going to put these instructions uh, in the chat, but I don't know that you will have, um, and you can use the chat for um, recording your information, but once you come back to the main room, you will lose your chat. So make sure that you copy it. Uh, when you return to the main room, and then we're going to share it out in the chat. <clears throat> I think you lose your chat anymore. I think your chat travels with you now. Oh, really? Well, that's fantastic. That's so much easier. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll All find right. out, but I, I'm pretty sure it does. All right. So are you guys ready? We'll give you a little bit longer of time on this one. How much? All right. You want five minutes? We'll give you five. All right, here we go. I'm room one. All right. Oh, and I have to send Denise to your room. Trying to room. Uh, I've just joined in. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's okay, we'll take care of you. We'll There's see you in a little bit. Go have fun. <laughs> Thank you. See that Denise, it looks like Denise is like both on a computer and a phone, maybe. Yeah, I so I sent For them sound. both to the same room. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah, keep an eye on the time. My so, yeah, I think we might be behind time already, but. <laughs> I had this like time down to the minute, <laughs> but of course yeah. we never start like right at the top of the hour. Well, that right. just doesn't happen. So right. I did not factor that in, but I think we're good. I'll make sure. I'll make ours. I'll make this super fast. <laughs> so I wanted to look at the Jamboard and see what kinds of things people answered. Oh, that's a fun idea. Um, so let's see. On um, the first one, the question was, what was a yummy thing that you ate? I love brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts. Oh, tangerine. I, Somebody has a picture of an apple. I love that. Chocolate croissant. Ooh, that sounds so good. Coffee. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly. Yummo. Guacamole. Mm, yummo. That was oh, me. I was one of the guacamoles. There's two guacamoles. Oh, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Jalapeno poppers. Fun. Uh, let's see. Let me skip over to superpowers. A super encourager. Aw, oh. nice. Someone wants to apparate. Yes. A little Harry That's Potter. <laughs> That's you? <laughs> I That's love me. it. <laughs> Harry Potter geeks unite. Uh, someone wants to be invisible. Read minds. Shape shift, total recall. Ooh, wouldn't that be handy? And someone else wants to fly. What does that mean? Total recall, like you can just remember everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would. I need that because I have. I have like negative recall. <laughs> A lot of it. Yeah. Let's see. Some people are looking for new activity ideas, ideas for virtual classes, inspiration to get back in the game. Yes, I need that too. New ideas for my classroom, some games, more game ideas, games related to social emotional learning, for sure. Excellent, we're going to do all that. So that's perfect. Yay. <clears throat> Yay, we are on track. I can fulfill expectations. Yeah, I love it when we're, we're already, we already have a plan for it. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Uh, let's see. I have a minute 30 left on my timer. Okay. Um, let's, uh, you know what? I think I might want to bop into a breakout room and see how they're doing with it. Yeah. Um, so now I have to figure out how to do, 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 do that. 
because I said I was going to join a break, break, breakout room later. Mm. Now I don't know how to join it. Oh, there we go. Found it. Join the okay. room. Oh, we have a room with only two people in it. That's because you're not in it. Uh, oh, wait, what happened to this person? Hmm. Yeah, so we didn't put uh, those two together. We should have. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that still should be fine. Yeah. Uh, let me bop into this one and see how they're doing. Let me turn my screen off before I do. do, do, do. You going to be a ninja? Yep, I'm going to be a ninja. <laughs> How'd you guys go? All right. We've got 17 seconds before they're all forced to come back. So people should be coming back. Da, 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 da. All right. It looks like everyone is back in the main room at this point. So we've picked up a couple of folks along the way. I love that. I love that you came. Um, it's so exciting to have you. I promise we are an inviting group and we'll just uh, scoop you up and let you know what's going on along the way. Um, before we went out into the breakout rooms, I asked each room to nominate one person uh, to then be the spokesperson for the band. So uh, we're going to pretend that the group chat is our 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 local lineup. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in or copy and paste um, all of your band members, uh, names, position, the band name, band position or instruments, uh, the genre, and your number one hit. Um, and then once everybody is ready, we're gonna do a three, two, one, and then what's called a chatterfall. But we're going to, I'm gonna take a screenshot and uh, that's gonna be our local festival playlist, all right? So you guys are all gonna be featured on the main stage uh, eventually. And so we'll see in what order uh, the bands come up on our playlist, so. Um, I'm gonna do a three, two, one, go. So everybody get ready and three, two, one, go. It should be a pow, 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 pow in the chat. <laughs> Caribbean flamingos, oh, I love that. Jazzettes, nice. So we've the got the wannabes, the workout hitters, the Caribbean flamingos, three-pointed star. I will star. survive is the, the top cover hit by the three-pointed star. I love it. We got the jazz at <laughs> chocolate warming jazz. 
I will survive the three-pointed star. Oh, Denise, that's one of my favorite phrases being voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Excellent. All right, you will get to work with your band again. We will get the band back together mm -hmm. uh, in a little bit. But I'm going to share my screen once again just to show you what we're going to do next. And that is the paper tear activity. So you should have about four pieces of paper, give or take. Uh, they can be eight and a half by 11. They can be almost any size. It's good if they're the same size as each other. So if you have those ready, you can go ahead and like wave them in front of the camera so I can see. I see Silvio's got his, Brent's got hers, Margarita's got hers, Kelly's ready. Mizey went and got his. Jordy's got his, all right. All right, wonderful. All right, so I'm going to be giving a series of instructions. And I'm gonna actually stop sharing at this point because I wanna be able to see you all pretty well. So I'm gonna give you a series of instructions something to do with one sheet of paper. So just get one sheet of paper ready. We're gonna do several rounds of this, which is why you need more than one sheet of paper. All right, so get that one piece of paper ready. And it should not be a piece of paper that you wanna do anything with later. So if you've been taking notes on it and you wanna see those notes later, this is not the piece of paper to use. Um, Cause we are going to, it's not gonna be readable when we're done. So I'm gonna give you a series of instructions of what to do with this piece of paper. And you're, you only have two restrictions. One restriction is that you can't ask me any questions. The other restriction is that we cannot see your paper while you're doing this activity. So you can choose to have your screen off if that's the easiest way to hide your paper, or you can just choose to have your paper somewhere where we can't see it in the camera. That's fine too. All right. If you're ready, give me a thumbs up, some kind of reaction. Good, I'm seeing some thumbs up, some nods, perfect. All right, so you have your piece of paper, fold your piece of paper in half and do it where we can't see it. You can be looking, but nobody else can see. All right, that instruction was fold the piece of paper in half. Next instruction, tear off the upper right hand corner. Good, I'm hearing some tearing, that's good. All right, next instruction, fold your paper in half again. All right. Next one, tear off the lower left-hand corner. All right, I'm seeing some tearing going on there. Some focus on the activity, good. Fold your piece of paper in half one more time. and tear off the upper left-hand corner. All right, once you've completed that instruction, I'll invite you to turn your camera back on and show us what your paper looks like. Oh, interesting, okay, we've got Oh, we got some holes in the middle. We've got one hole in the middle. We've got three holes in the middle. And we have one very small piece with a corner ripped out of the corner. Micey, do you have more than one piece? Well, you have I was trying to pull it open like everybody else has done. Oh, you just have it still folded. Yeah, I, if I was supposed to unfold it, I missed that instruction. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So we're going to send you back into your breakout rooms. 
And what I'd like you to talk about is a couple things. One, why do you think we had different pieces of paper at the end of it? Everyone got the same instructions. There was no like trick to it. So why did people end up with different pieces of paper? And the second question is, if we're gonna do this again, which we will, how can you and your breakout room end up with the same piece of paper at the end? Does that make sense? So two questions, how did you end up with different things and how could you end up with the same thing at the end of the second round? And we're still not allowed to show it. Correct, the, the uh, guidelines are gonna be the same. Um, you won't be able to ask me questions. You won't be able to show your piece of paper to anyone, but your goal is to have the same piece of paper at the end as the people in your breakout room. Good, anyone else need a clarifying point? Okay, we're gonna send you back into breakout rooms. All right, here we go. Get the band back together. Ooh. So I'm going to pop. T. T is here. I know. I shoved him in a, a room. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't know if he can hear us or if he's still in here with us. It looks like I, I gave him a room. He hasn't joined it yet. Okay. And then I, I split up one of the rooms of two, but. Okay, Did, were they in the they, same room? They should be fine. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if we wanted to put the ones that had two together or not. Right. Either way is fine. Yeah, because now we've got four, four, three, and four. That works. I like that. It says five, but that's just because Denise is in there twice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, I'm interested to see what they come up with for what they're going to do or how they're going to. Um, yeah. Oh, we didn't tell them how long they were going to get. No, we didn't. But I think we'll give them a good, well, about five minutes. But I think in a minute or so, I'll bop into a room and see mm -hmm. how they're doing. The other thing we can do is we can broadcast a message to all of the rooms if we want to. Yeah, maybe let's do that instead. Um, like in a minute or so broadcast mm -hmm. that they have two minutes left. Sure. I find that if I don't set timers. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, My yeah. phone now has a bajillion alarms on it that I can turn on and off because I need alarms to tell me when I should do stuff because yeah. if I don't do that, I'm never going to, I'm going to forget meetings and I'm going to mm -hmm. forget things I should be doing. So, yep. Nice. It's taken me a while, but I'm learning. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I started recording. I wasn't sure if you were recording. Oh my gosh. Thank you. No, I forgot. Okay. When yeah. I checked started... early on when you were doing your introduction. I was like, I wonder if we're recording. Now we are. So. <laughs> oh, normally I remember those things. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Whoops. That's why we have partnerships, right? Yeah, so we can help right? each other out that way. Um, sometimes it's like set to auto record too, but I think it got bumped off mm -hmm. because. All right, we have people back. Did you figure out some good strategies, do you think? All right. Susan says they got a plan. Perfect. <laughs> In the rock band theme. I was like, man, <laughs> yeah. 
They got five seconds. Okay, they all will be pouring back in here. Excellent. All right. Do you all have a plan now? I see some nods. I see some thumbs up. All right. Perfect. All right. So get ready for round two. So same things apply. Can't ask me any questions. Get your piece of paper out. You're going to need a new piece of paper for this one. So piece of paper number two. I'm going to give instructions. You're going to follow the instructions. Don't let us see your paper. Um, and yeah, that's it. You can have your camera on, camera off, mute on, mute off, chat on, chat off. All those things are up to you. All right. First instruction, fold your piece of paper in half. Next instruction, tear off the lower right hand corner. Next, fold your piece of paper in half. Tear off the upper right hand corner. And fold your piece of paper in half one more time. and tear off the lower left-hand corner. All right, once you've completed that instruction, go ahead and unfold your paper and let's see what we've got. All right. I'm seeing some with two holes now, some with one hole. All right, so looking around, can you tell who was in your, who's in your band? And do they have paper that's uh, the same as yours? I think we're All good. Right. Woohoo! Nice. All right, so I'd love to see either in the chat or we are a small group so we can unmute. Um, how did you get the same get your papers to be the same. Our group, the workout hitters, Jordy, myself, and Fabiani, we came up with a plan to be consistent and mm -hmm. orient our paper from the start the same way, fold the same direction, not twist, turn, or rotate our paper, and just follow the instructions says we saw the paper, not from the not from a viewer's, but from our own standpoint. Mm -hmm. So we kind of came up with some ground rules and it looks like all three of us were successful. We have the same pattern. Very nice. That's awesome. What other groups, what did you all do? Hey, Denise, that's you now. <laughs> So I, I think very similarly, we came up with a strategy. We agreed, you know, how are we going to fold it? Where's the fold going to be oriented? And, and we had even had a contingency plan if you asked us something that hadn't been asked yet before. So I, I couldn't Ooh. quite tell if we had all um, um, matched that up, but I think, I think we did. Yeah. Who was, uh, who's your, who's your band, Denise? Go it, ahead and fold um, your paper also. Yeah. Ah, the two hole band. I'm, I'm uh. pretty sure I failed on the last time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's pretty close though. I mean, yours is on the edge, but and there's in the middle, but yours is on the edge. So that's pretty close. Mm. Very cool. All right. How about the other band? We had at least one other band, maybe two. Chelsea threw uh, some of her comments in the chat. So I don't know if anybody oh. in that band wants to speak to. 
All right. In the chat, sure. Chelsea. Go ahead. Um, so our band was the Jazzet. So um, mm -hmm. we decided that we all wanted to start with the, the same size paper. And then after the same size paper, we decided to decide which way to fold it. So either hack dog style or hamburger style. <laughs> um, and then we also thought that more precise measurements. So instead of just tearing the top right corner, it could be tear one inch of the top corner or a half an inch. So going a little bit more detail would help ours look the same. Cool. Um, oh man, see. it's like you guys know stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious though, did anyone talk about utilizing some of the tools that we have available to us on Zoom? Did anyone talk about utilizing the chat to make sure you're all on the same page? I think because we actually got had direct contact with our, our, our band, we were using uh, facial expression and we demonstrated and we talked about it and we got to ask questions and confirm. So we had, we had an opportunity to communicate pretty effectively. Although I know there are some things that we could do with annotation and using the chat or uh, even practicing, but we had decent communication. Wouldn't you agree, Fabiani and Jordy? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So would you say that, um, that your bands have settled on some norms as far as paper tearing norms? <laughs> I'm seeing a nod. So it sounds like you all talked about, you have a sh shared language for, okay, the hot dog versus hamburger. We're gonna fold it this way, um, this far from the corner or this much to tear off or all of those kinds of things. So those are things that you all agreed to um, while you were doing your planning to solve this problem. Is that a good assessment? Does anyone want to have anything to add to that? Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. And we're going to move on to the next bit here. So this is the playlist. These are the things that we have done so far together. Um, actually, there's one thing on here we haven't done yet, which is a new anthem that's going to come toward the end. Um, if you would please share in the chat, what do you think the purpose of doing these activities in this order was? Did each activity have a different purpose? Did they have a similar purpose? Um, why would we do them in the, this order? So Susan says sequencing, they build on each other. Build in what way, Susan? Can you un unmute and talk to us about that? I was chatting. Uh, let's see, uh, the communication and uh, collaboration. You know, we're kind of knowing who our community is, who's in our band communicating and kind of getting to know each other and uh, taking baby steps to get to bigger projects. Mm -hmm. So we took baby steps to get from like meeting each other to solving problems together. Perfect. Um, I see also in the chat to become more comfortable with each other for sure. Building communication skills, build group connections, then work together. Absolutely. Deanna's on the money. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Form, storm, norm, and perform. That's right. We're going to hit on that just next. Communication and collaboration to solve problems, building problem solving skills for sure. All right, friends, I'm going to steal the screen sharing away from Lucinda. I'm going to show you guys 
something. Um, continue. So there's a reason we call it a playlist. I think that's what Bryn's getting. Yeah. At. So in the chat are links um, to where you can download the Kikori app. And we're just waiting for my computer to catch up to my phone. Unless, can you guys see it? It's black for me. It's black for me too. Oh, okay. Come on. Do you want me to talk about it a little bit while your well, phone is catching up? Or do you want to just talk about it? Yeah, so um, I'm just really sad. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, it's so cool when, it's, when it works. Um, and it's, it's so pretty. Um, we, I'm going to stop and see if I can do it again. Um, so we started on this journey a little while ago and we released a beta version of the app just before the pandemic. Um, and we launched just recently and our newest version came out last month. There we go. Um, so here, here's the app. Um, and you can sort of discover activities recently added. And these are recently added because we needed them for today. Um, <laughs> and you can find them by category or by creator down here at the bottom. Um, your home button is your, uh, your profile. But we also have playlists. So we created a playlist for this webinar. And in this playlist is the order of activities that we're doing. But you can click into the activity. You can see the overview, the materials needed, what attributes, um, group structure. And then here, when you click on the instructions, it gives you easy to follow instructions with facilitator tips but then guided reflection questions that follow the experiential learning cycle. And we'll get into that a little bit more later, um, but that very succinctly follow that what, so what, now what. Um, and seasoned facilitators might not need this, but if you are struggling to come up with good debriefing questions to complete that learning cycle, that helps solidify that learning, um, it's here at your fingertips. Um, and then, there's variations. And then we have a source card. And again, um, a lot of stuff in our industry is of oral tradition, but it's our passion to make sure that we give credit to original creators. Um, and so a lot of the activities have uh, credited authors, but if you know something that we don't know, we'd love to hear it. And then all of our activities are aligned with uh, sustainable development goals, 21st century skills, and CASEL's social emotional learning standards. So that is a quick overview of how playlists work. And you can drag and drop uh, and reorder the playlists as well. You can share them with other teachers or coworkers or contacts. Um, say, hey, this is a really great activity or this is a really great sequence. I'd love to show you more. Um, or you can just browse by category. There's also quick filters. You can filter by age, by attribute, all kinds of fun things. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys that real quick so that you could follow along for the rest of our webinar. And also, um, it has all the, since it has all the instructions for all these activities, now that you've done them, you have all those instructions right there at your fingertips, which is really great. Mm -hmm. Do we have yeah. a filter for social distance challenges? Yep. Yep, we do. Sure do. Sure yeah, do. we, we launched on March 2nd and uh, very quickly we pivoted. And so the first uh, modification that we made was uh, we added a bunch of virtual activities. 
ones that you can do while safely physical distancing and ones that utilize outdoor spaces since a lot of administrations were starting to encourage their groups to be outside. Um, and I know a lot of littles needed mask breaks and teachers felt out of their element. They didn't know what to do when they didn't have the resources of their classroom nearby. Um, and so throw your phone in your pocket, go outside and you can run an activity pretty successfully. So the web app is coming. Um, it should be done within the next couple of weeks, um, but right now it's on your phone. So one of the reasons that um, Bryn and I uh, made a, a partnership that we connected so well is that um, all the activities, um, they're great on the app. You can access them really easily. You can sequence them really easily. But if you're a person who doesn't know what sequencing is and how to do that and all of that, that's where I come in. Um, I'm a trainer as well as a facilitator. And so I train people how to do these activities, not only do the activities, but how to utilize them, plan with them, um, sequence with them and teach with them. Um, so that's what we're doing with these webinars a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna start sharing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sharing the right thing, there we go. And so, as I think, as somebody pointed out earlier, Denise, I think, um, we hopefully have been through a little bit of these first stages. What we've done is what I like to call forming with intention. So when you're forming a group, um, you have people who've never seen each other before, it's the beginning of the school year, it's the beginning of the day, however, it's the beginning of a project, whatever it might be, a group goes through these stages and forming is the first one that we encounter. Um, part of forming, did anyone at the beginning of the webinar feel just a little bit, I don't wanna say uneasy, but just unsure about what we were gonna do and how you fit in and all of that? Um, so those are things that happen at, these, at this forming stage. What I like to talk about is community building is actually forming with intention, like I said. Um, and so there's reasons to do it that way. And there's reasons to do it with intention and there's ways to do it with intention. So the first thing to know is that it's good to go slow to go fast. And what I mean by that is it's really important to take the time to build that community with whatever group you're working with, whether it's your classroom at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the day, whatever it might be, uh, whether it's a group that you're gonna have for two hours, it's still worth spending some time building those relationships at the beginning. Um, that allows you to get a lot more done later. Um, teachers I know have a lot of pressure to have to hit certain benchmarks at certain times of the year. Um, and it's difficult for administrators to understand that they need to spend that time at the beginning of the year, but that really, really is important to spend that time because they can catch it up really well later in the year. Uh, the next thing that's important is to sequence intentionally. We've talked a little bit about the sequence that we've had um, and the fact that the sequence built on itself. For example, I wouldn't necessarily wanna do paper tear right off the bat with a group. Depending on the group, maybe I would, but with a group that's never met each other before, I wanted you all to introduce yourselves a little bit first, talk with yourself, each other a little bit, make some decisions together before you are asked to solve a problem together. So that way the sequence builds on itself. And that's a really important uh, concept, really important thing to know. The other thing to know is that you need to observe your group very closely. If I go back to this slide here, one of the ways, one of the reasons I need to observe my groups very closely is to figure out which stage they're in. Are we still forming as a group? Have we already figured out what our roles are? So are we to the point where we figured out how to communicate with each other and how that's going to work really well? Um, have we figured out what our roles and responsibilities are? Or do we have conflict? Do we have power struggles? Um, if so, then we're in the storming stage and my role as a leader changes throughout all of these stages. So it's important for me to observe my group and realize what stage they're in to know what role I need to take. 
The next thing that's really important, especially when you're building community and you're doing any activity where you're uh, facilitating rather than kind of delivering information is to ask questions genuinely. Ask questions that you actually want to know the answer to from your students. If you are asking a question that you already know the answer to, or you think you already know the answer to, your students are going to realize that. They're going to realize that you don't actually want their thoughts and their feelings and their opinions. Um, that changes what voice they have in the classroom. Uh, and they, they'll know that. They'll know right away that you're not being genuine. You're not asking questions in a genuine way. And then finally, be open to outcomes. Um, so I was not really prepared for you all to have papers that looked as similar as they did when we did the paper tear activity in the second round. You all communicated really well. Um, and I was, I was prepared to do a, maybe a third round or maybe a fourth round to get you to that point. But you all got to that point where it, rather quickly. And some of the answers that you gave to the questions that I asked, I wasn't necessarily prepared for those, but I was open to it. Um, I was open to what you all come up with. And I find that most often when I'm open to the outcomes, my students will surprise me in really fantastic ways. They will come up with answers to things that are way deeper than what I thought I was asking about. Uh, so being open to those outcomes is really, really important. So one of the reasons that we need to form intentionally and build that community is so that the other stages that our groups go through goes well or goes better than it would have. If I have a group, they've never met each other before, we're just forming and I don't intentionally build my activities from simpler to more complex, from fewer people to talk to, to more people to talk to, that kind of thing. If I'm not intentional about it and I just kind of throw some activities at them, they won't necessarily build community. And then when they get to the point where they have differences of opinion and they start to have power struggles as every group does, it doesn't go well. And then we have to cycle right back to the forming stage. We can't progress to norming because we didn't do the work we needed to do in that forming stage. So that one of the reasons that we wanted to do a webinar about this topic is that it's just so crucial to set that tone and build that community right off the bat so that you don't have to recycle and go back to that stage over and over again. You can progress to norming and then get good at that and progress to really doing fantastic work together. So I'd like to invite you to, let me check the time. Oh, we're doing pretty well on time. Yay, we caught up. <laughs> um, I'd like to invite you to a new Jamboard. We're gonna put that uh, in the chat. Um, and this is a place for you all to share at community building activities that you use. Because I know some of you have done this work for maybe as long as I have in some cases. Um, and so you have knowledge to share and we'd like to get to that point at this, at this time. So if you wanna follow the link that's in the chat there is a Jamboard there, and that's a place for you to put um, names or descriptions or whatever you want to put about the activities that you like to use to build community. Um, yes, this session, it was asked in the chat, this session will be shared. We will have a recording of this session um, that will be available in the next couple days. Uh, so if you are joining us, um, not live, whatever the asynchronously, there we go. If you're joining us asynchronously or you have to leave early, there will be a recording of it for you to watch later. Um, excellent. So we invite you to head over to the Jamboard. I'm going to go, I've stopped sharing my screen and I'm going to head over to the Jamboard and see what we've got there. All right. What I might do is kind of ask people to describe some of the things that are being put in here. Actually, let me, let me share my screen again, if I can find my controls so you can see what's being shared here. Mm -hmm. Whoops. 
All right, let's see. All my Zoom people, five finger contract. I use that a lot. Rock, paper, scissors series. Yep, I use that a lot too. Uh, the being. Who put the being up? I like, oh, Bryn did. <laughs> Bryn, tell us about I the did. being. It's, um, it's a Lori Frank activity and how I do it or how I did it pre-COVID um, was I had one of my participants lay on a big piece of uh, butcher's paper and we trace them and we put inside um, all the things that we want to be um, and outside all of the things that we don't want to be. Perfect. Uh, so we have a some a request for someone to describe the five finger contract. Mm -hmm. So that I one can do mine. that, but I would love for someone else to do it. <laughs> did you put that in too, Bryn? I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is anyone else familiar with the five finger contract? Denise is. Denise, would you like to describe it for us? Sure, I can. I can do that. I know that there's a, a variety of, of ways. Um, mm -hmm. It allows okay. them people to engage and sort of set up some norms. And so I'll usually everyone hold up a hand and I'll ask the group, hey, what does a thumb normally represent? They shout out some ideas and I say, okay, you know, today we're going to agree to, um, I gotta <laughs> rethink my, um, to give acknowledgements, you know, point out the, like, look at the really good things and acknowledge each other, look for the positive things. And then I'll say, you know, what does the pointer finger represent? And I say, okay, today we're going to commit to pointing out the positive and I'll have everybody do this with me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey, what does this middle finger usually represent? And I'll keep my fingers together as I show. And they're like, oh, you know, bad words, bad things. I'm like, okay, so today we're going to stay away from the negative and make sure we point out the positive. And this finger usually commitment, um, it, you know, to a, a a relationship or to a cause or together to a community. Okay, so we're really going to be committed to staying away from the negative and pointing out the positive. And little finger actually is my favorite one because people are like, oh, pinky promise or the little guy. Mm. And so I really like that idea of the little guy. And, and I asked the group, how many of you play instruments or a sport? You know, you've got to throw a ball, hold a racket. Can you imagine trying to do that or play the piano and the guitar if you didn't have your pinky? So by itself, pretty weak, weak right? Because you could easily hurt your pinky, but together with everyone else, you can do amazing things, right? Play, create amazing music, art, you know, experiences. And so for all of us that we're gonna look out for the little guy, because at any point, any of us can be the little guy at any given moment, but we still have something amazing to contribute. And we're going to be committed to staying away from the negative and putting out the positive, and the last piece, I'm like, all right, everyone, so we're going to sign our contract. So either we'll do a full body butt sign, um, but we're going to high five and sign by clapping and high fiving when you can each other or our screen. And that's the fantastic. I love that. I love the, the little guy. I like that. Fantastic. Yeah, there are very, a lot of different variations of the five finger contract, but it's nice to have five things. Um, I often ask groups, okay, so we've done, we've talked about these five things. Do they sound reasonable? Are these things that you could agree to do today? Um, and they, usually the groups are like, yep, I think I could. And so then we agree to the, the five finger contract. Um, let's see, what's in a name? Somebody want to tell us what that is? Yeah, that would be mine. Um, so I work with a lot of um, students that come from many parts of the world. And so we like to do this activity for students to share their name. Um, when we're in person, they write it out as well. Um, but also like what nicknames their family have given them and what's the story behind their name or what their name means. Um, so the conversation can take uh, many different routes, um, depending on how they decide to take it. Great. I love that one too. Um, I've worked with international groups and um, also groups. There are some groups where I'll put that one kind of late in the sequence after they've already built up some camaraderie and they've done some things together and they have that kind of group feel uh, and they trust each other. Um, and then some of the revelations that can come out when they talk about their names can be really deep. Um, I love that one. Perfect. 
All right, I think we can. So the nice thing is you have the link to the Jamboard and we can keep adding to this even after this webinar is over. Um, and if you're looking at this on a recording, you will have the link to this Jamboard and you can add yours as well. Um, this is a kind of a quick and dirty way to share. Um, if you have the Kikori app and you have some of these things and you want to write them up and share them with us, that would also be really fantastic. We would love that. Yeah, so on Kikori, what's great is that um, we have over 30 creators of activities. Um, and so if you know of an activity or you do a variation, um, I would love for you to add it to our community. So um, there's some of these activities that are already on there. If you're looking for a new social contract idea, you can filter by uh, the attribute social contract. But if something's missing um, and you think that it'll make a difference to other facilitators or educators, I would love to add it to the app. So we've got um, sort of a, uh, what am I, um, an editing process. So it has to be submitted, uh, a review process rather. Um, so it has to be submitted. We review it, make sure that you're not telling four-year-olds to climb up to, uh, you know, the catwalk and slice at each other with samurai swords. Um, just making sure that everything's on the up and up. Um, and if there's edits, there's a discussion process um, before we put things out live. But um, it's so fun to have multiple voices and perspectives uh, represented on the app um, because I think that everybody is out there doing amazing things. And I hate that so much of our community is doing them without the support um, and the access to one another. And so we're truly trying to create a community where we can all lift each other up um, and build on one another's collective knowledge. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna resume sharing here. Mm -hmm. So um, in thinking about building a community, some of the activities that we talked about had to do with creating something together. That does a couple things. One, it, um, it builds that community because you have created something together, but also if you create something that represents your group and represents the things that you've agreed to as far as the norms or the, the guidelines that your community is going to live by, you have it to refer to later. Um, so today, so far, we have created something together. We created bands. Um, you ch chose some things, you made those decisions together. And that's a, an important part of the process as well. Um, even when you're creating norms for a classroom, some of the things that have to be in the classroom are rules that the school has or something that works for the teacher, but it's important for the students have to, to have some input as well. Um, and for those things to be agreed upon because then you can use them as a contract later. Um, you can create something to represent the group. Uh, Bryn talked about the being. That's one of the things that um, people do sometimes. Um, on the Kikori app, there's a whole category of creative projects. I've seen teachers create a village that represents their classroom. Um, there might be a circle of hands. There might be, um, what else have I seen? Um, the being is another one. Um, there are a lot of, and the other thing about these that I love is that it gets those artistic kind of juices flowing, um, which accesses the brain in a whole different way than just words do. So it becomes a social contract. Um, there's a, that's another category on the app, um, social contracts. And so some of those activities kind of cross over with this idea of creating something together. So not only does it represent your group and give you something to refer to, but it's also an activity that builds community as well. The important thing is to make it a living document. When you make one of these things, it should be something that you not only refer to later, but that you're open to changing from time to time. If something comes up, a conflict comes up and you refer back to it and you said, okay, we agreed to use kind words. What does that mean? What does that look like? What does that sound like? What kinds of words are we using? Um, the words that I just heard just now those didn't sound like kind words to me. What other words could we use? 
Um, that's something that um, I've done in the classroom a lot. And it's good to have something physical, something to represent those things to refer to, especially with younger kids. It's also good to have this so that when conditions change, for example, if you've been working in your classroom online for six months, and then you're gonna be moving into a socially distanced classroom, the conditions of your classroom are gonna change quite a bit, but your social contract might not need to change, or it might. So you can bring back your, whatever you've created to represent your classroom or your group and say, okay, we were online, now we're in person, we have these additional restrictions that we have to put in here. How is that gonna change how we interact with each other? Is it gonna change how we interact with each other? Um, what kinds of kind words do we need to hear? What's that, what does that look like in a socially distanced classroom? Um, we have to add in you know, the whole distance idea and all, of, all the COVID protocols and all of that kind of stuff. It's worth revisiting those things in those conditions. So this is an example of a contract that I created with a school they had um, four agreements that they had in their school. One of those was mutual respect. I can't remember off the top of my head what the other ones were, but these are kind of the, the rules or the, the guidelines that the school had. And they were having trouble getting the kids to kind of buy into these things. And so I did a whole um, adventure PE unit with them. I brought them into the gym, we played games and we're like, okay, did we mutually respect each other during this game? What did that look like? Um, and here, I love some of the things that the kids wrote. Um, and it, again, it's really important to put it in their words, not just mine. Um, it looks like, can I please be your partner? And somebody answering yes, instead of, no, you can't be my partner. <laughs> like that was important for mutual respect, for people to accept anyone as a partner. Um, so that's one of the ways that we can do it. I love this because all the hands were cut out ahead of time. <laughs> I just bought the hands and just, wrote the things that the kids told me on them, made it pretty simple. All right, so we know that reflection is where learning gets solidified and we wanna create something new together. So we are gonna create a new anthem. Bryn, do you wanna walk us through this? Mm. Um, so there was, I was thinking that we could do it one of two ways. Either we could send you back into your bands um to do it but i think that there's few enough of us that it'll be more meaningful if we do it all together as a large group so what we're gonna do is um we're gonna create a new anthem uh can anybody tell me what an anthem is song <laughs> Here we go. What kind of song? <laughs> what kind of song? Song with a message. Something that epitomizes a group. There you go, Denise. Nice. A song with a message. Thank you, Susan. Um, so an anthem, and I've sort of likened it also to a collective mantra or a group motto. But an anthem is usually something that energizes a, a group of people that identifies with some sort of cause. Um, and so the challenge by choice or the variation can be to make it a song. Or um, I was really moved by Amanda Gorman last uh, two weeks ago um, and thought that the spoken word can be just as uplifting and moving. Um, so we are going to popcorn style um, and we all know how Zoom works uh, when we try to speak on top of each other, but um, it's going to be a fun activity. And we're going to make statements that begin with I can, I will, or I hope. And so those are, uh, those are your starters in the chat. Um, and we'll go for uh, maybe 30 to 45 seconds. And we're going to create a new anthem. So all the bands together, creating an anthem. And what are uh, those things that epitomize us 
as a group. Um, and so again, challenge by choice. Um, as far as unmuting and participating, um, remember to share the air. This is a group activity. Um, and three, two, one, go. I will be a better leader. I can build community with intention. I can always stay positive. I hope to inspire others. I can bring kindness. I will I do my best and assume others are doing the same. I will bring the fun. I can support others to build healthy, fun communities. I will be creative and inspire others and I hope to make a difference. And this is our window of opportunity. All right, friends, that was a beautiful anthem. It made me smile. It makes me feel inspired. I love it. Um, that can be a great closing activity um, or something that then you can build on uh, together. And Lucinda, do you want to finish sharing the last yeah. couple of screens? Your video is being funny. It is. It's being very strange. Can you still hear me though? I can still hear you. Okay. Let me, oh, no, it's not letting me share my screen. Here, I can do it. Huh, technical things. Just when you think you have them all sorted out, they decide not to let you be sorted. <laughs> all right. You guys know Dan Miller? Dan Miller has a, had a, just published an article <laughs> about plan A, B, C, and D. <laughs> and it included <laughs> technical stuff. Um, so this is our obligatory, do you want to know more slide at the end of the presentation? Um, do you want to know more about Kikori or Whole Planet Consulting? How about staff training? Keynote opportunities? Coaching? Conference workshops? Um, play notes? Professional development? The desktop app that's coming soon? A mobile application? Reach out to us. So our contact information is at the bottom of this slide. Um, Lucinda and I both do all of those things, and we would love to uh, engage in more. Um, we are taking our show on the road. We will be <laughs> presenting at, I think, every Heartland region or every AEE regional conference. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and um, a couple other conferences as well. Oh, what is AEE? Oh, it's it's my favorite thing. I'm so glad you asked. Um, <laughs> AEE is the Association for Experiential Ed. Um, and AEE dot, oh, it wants to autocorrect, uh, is their website. Um, so it is a fantastic professional association that is historically does uh, one international conference in the fall and then regional conferences um, all spring. So far, all their regional conferences are virtual. 
um, which makes the regional conferences exceptionally accessible. Um, we uh, just finished up ACCT last week. Um, there's some uh, and I seen is the international something EE network. Um, there's there's a, a bunch of opportunities, but um, yeah. So this is the second um, workshop in our series that we're doing outside of conferences. So these are all free. Um, they're every two weeks through the end of March. So you can sign up for those. There's events on uh, the Kikori Facebook page. Um, and then we're sending them out um, in our newsletter. If you, Kikori, K-K-O-R-I, uh, kikoriapp.com is my website and it has a whole bunch of great information. You can sign up for our newsletter there, follow us on socials you know, all those uh, usual requests. Um, also, uh, we did put a virtual tip jar up there that is linked to um, Whole Planet Consulting. Um, if you felt like there was something of value, um, certainly not obligated by any means, um, but wanted to make that available um, because that's sometimes how people show gratitude, so. And Lucinda, you're still black. Yeah. Oh, so. but you're talking. I can hear you. Is okay, good. You Zoom, yeah. Uh, Zoom has completely just it's not working at the moment, but I'm glad you can still hear me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so all the things Bryn, Bryn said um, go for me as well. Uh, my website is wholeplanetconsulting.com. Um, you can sign up for the webinars there if you'd like. Um, I am not as good about newsletters and things as, as uh, Kikori is, because it's just me, myself, and I in the company. Um, but again, if you got value out of this webinar or um, whether you're here live or whether you're um, watching it on video, uh, on the recording, um, if you can drop something into the tip jar, we'd appreciate it, but you know, we understand that that's not possible for everyone. Um, and if you like this webinar, feel free to share as well. I'm, it'll be, i am be curious to see what the video looks like <laughs> since I'm <laughs> recording and now Zoom has really stopped working. So we'll see what, what happens. Hopefully there'll be at least an audio recording of something. Yeah. Uh, but I also want to say thank you so much for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot easier for us to present this material when we have people to play with. So thank you so much for coming and playing with us um, and being willing to uh, reflect and respond and participate uh, and share with each other. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And then in two weeks, we're be, we'll be talking about um, the three R's and what those mean and, and why your 21st century students need them. So yeah. Um, we're so excited. I'm interested in uh, social emotional learning stuff, which we covered a little bit today. Um, next week is going to be heavily social emotional learning yeah. focused. Yes, I'm making I'm making the brain science model with my hand. So if, yes. <laughs> if you want to figure out how to make this into something that you can teach your students and equipping your students with these models is so helpful. Um, when I tell my students about the stages of group development, it gives them sort of this external framework to reference and it makes it less about uh, them and themselves as an individual. In, when I say that all groups go through storming, all groups go through forming. Um, and so this next one is uh, one that I am really passionate about talking to with middle schools when it comes to brain development and the three R's and telling them um, that their inability to regulate is not their fault. It's that their brains have not grown so rapidly since they were toddlers um, and giving them this information it 
it's really fantastic for your relationship with them and it helps you understand them and it helps them understand themselves. And so I would love to see you in two weeks. Um, tell your friends. And if you have any questions at all, like, please, I love talking to people. So reach out anytime. Um, but it was so good to have you guys all and we're at time. So we'll see you. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, if you want to stay a little bit and just chat and get some more questions answered, feel free to do that. Um,